incredible. Um, in fact, either arrest dealers or let them continue working. If you arrest a dealer and it turns out to be cheating, you will earn a $4 bonus. Arrest the dealer, turns out to be cheating. However, if you arrest a dealer and he turns out to be innocent, he will sue you for ten dollars. So, if he turns out to be innocent, he will sue you for ten dollars. Allowing the cheater to continue working will cost you two dollars. Allowing an honest dealer to continue working will get you one dollar. Assume your utility function has the following form: ux. You observe a dealer doing something suspicious, and also observe that he deals a 10 to a player folding 11. Should you arrest the dealer? Okay, so this is a pretty tricky question. So what we need to resolve here is, for each of the two possible actions, arresting and not arresting, what's the expected payoff is? Okay, this is a pretty intriguing question. What we need to find out here is what is the expected utility when we do an arrest and the expected utility when we don't do an arrest and then compare those two values. Utility. When we do an arrest. Equal to the probability that we have a dishonest dealer, given that we saw something suspicious and we saw a genuine sale, times what's our payoff for arresting a dishonest dealer. We get a four dollar bonus, so that's times four. And then plus the probability that it's an honest dealer, given that we saw something suspicious on camera and the ten was down, times the payoff for arresting an honest dealer. I want to divide for ten dollars, so that's a minus ten. And we'll compare that with the expected utility. No arrest. Which is the probability of the okay. honest dealer given plus the given the ten was dealt. Now times the utility of no arrest with this honest dealer. Well they will Continue working, and it'll cost you minus And here the probability of an honest dealer, given suspicious activity on camera, and a seamless dealt, times the payoff for not arresting an honest dealer, which is one, and times one here. Now what's left to do is to compute the probabilities of having an honest versus dishonest dealer, given that um, we saw this is an activity on camera and 10 was dealt. That's exactly what we computed in part B over here. So at this point, given the problem statement we're done, we expressed the answer to this question in terms of quantities we've computed in previous question. Um, and now, if we call this and we call this y, then we'll say this right, bigger than y to arrest tells to not arrest. Private invest, moving on to the next part, a private investigator approaches you and offers to investigate the dealer from the previous part. If you hire him, he will tell you with 100% certainty whether the dealer is cheating or honest. And you can then make a decision about whether to arrest him or not. How much would you be willing to pay for this information? 
if you hire this private investigator, then your utility will be as follows. Probability dishonest is on the plus B and D equals N. That private investigator will tell you that this is a cheating dealer, in which case you would decide to perform an arrest and get a utility of four. But there's then also a probability that you have an honest dealer, which the investigator will clarify to you. And because you will know for sure that it's an honest dealer in that situation, you will not arrest, in which you get a penalty. One and so okay, let's call this Z. And then Z is the expected utility when given the plus H negative H information from the investigator. Okay, so how much will we be willing to pay for this information? Well, we would if we didn't have this information, we would get an expected utility of the max over x and y, which we computed in the previous question. Here we will get c. So the amount we're willing to pay is the difference between these two. We're willing to pay the difference between z and the max of x and y to the investigator to get that 